So let's get started. We're coming for Adam Krishnamasana. Really see how much work you can get in the upper back spine. So if you have a look here and coming into the pose, just getting some stability to start with. So just watch the screen for a moment. Going to reach into those back thighs, extending back nicely. And then I'm going to lift the head forward and release the spine a little. And then how much can you get that action of lifting and then releasing the spine. And then again, lifting. Seeing if you can find that hinge in the center of that upper back and then release it. All right, so we're gonna come again, but this time you don't have to look at the camera, you can just take the position and I will talk you through. So taking your hands into Adam Kishmanasana, get into the position. Now we know the basics. We have to see that the arms are really nice and strong and there's a strength in the back legs. Push back very strongly and you may need to just hinge yourself forward and back for a few moments so that you're able to get some connection into those back thighs, into the back of the hamstrings. And once you feel that stability coming into the pose, remember it's our first pose at this moment in time. So go and see now that you look up, the chest is looking forward. There's a slight lifting of the chin. See if you can access that center of the back chest area. And release it again, not the complete pose, but just that action. And again, look forward, look forward. So you should be working on your work, not looking at the video at this moment in time. And work and see, can you move that upper back in? Get that upper back really connected. And then release it again. We'll have one more go at this. I want to see, can you push so strongly? Looking forward, chin a little bit more elevated than normal. Look forward, look forward. See if you can keep that connection with the upper back as you come into your pose. Now stabilize that Adam Krishnamasana. So now that you've established that wonderful strength in the legs and there's a connection with the upper back, still keep now looking with the chin forward and walk the feet in towards your hands. And then we're going to come up so that you can take a look at the next pose. So we're coming for Uttanasana. So just have a look. Taking the feet to the outer edges of the mat. Now keeping that lift. Now already we've established there needs to be strong legs and a connection in the upper back. A rolling of the shoulders and extending. Now I want you to keep those arms very strong when you come to do this pose. Strong and extended. And then taking the hands down to the floor. Now in this position I want you to look very carefully at this action. When you lift these body groins at the base of the abdomen, you lift the buttocks at the same time. You lift and broaden the buttocks. You lift in the lower abdomen and broaden the buttocks. And if that action wasn't happening, watch how these inner groins start to drop. You can see. So we want to keep that lift and then folding your arms into this position. All right, so it's your turn. Now you can take the feet to the outer edges of the mat and continue to get that length of the spine and extension of the chest. Now as you take your fingers to the floor or to a couple of bricks, if you find that the floor is a little bit too far away, then work on those groins. You've got to sharpen the outer edges of the feet, lengthen and lift those body groins and lift the buttocks at the same time. Now you've got that support and stability, fold your arms and lengthen your spine. 
I will just be in that position. So the whole of the frame, the legs are very strong, there's a breadth and broadness in the buttock, and there's a length in the spine. Now don't let that connection become lost. You have to maintain it. Breathe in this position. Let those arms extend. Soft inhalation and soft exhalation. Okay, we're going to come out of this pose by keeping that strength in the legs, sharpen the outer foot bones, release those arms and slowly coming up. Prasarita Padottanasana. Now I'm going to jump into this and I want you to watch the screen just for a moment. So we're going to take the fingers to the chest, jump in the legs nice and wide. Now, same thing. We're going to roll the shoulders back and down. Find the action that we're trying to create in Adamakashvanasana and Uttanasana. Keep the lift through the waist and extend forward, reaching forward. Taking the hands down onto the floor or bricks, whichever is suitable. Now again, this body groin action is important. Lift from the lower body groin as much as you can. Keep that connection. Now from here, hold on to the lower leg and look forward. Pull up kneecaps. Pull on the lower leg. Pull on the lower leg. Notice I'm walking these hands down and then releasing any amount. Alright, your turn. I'm going to talk you through. Take those legs nice and wide. Be sharp on those outer foot bones and then see that you're getting that action that we've got in Adamakashvanasana and Uttanasana. Roll the shoulders back and down. Keep that connection. Now placing your hands onto the floor, keeping the back nice and strong, and then walk your hands to the lower leg. Now don't take the hands to your ankles. I want you to just step those hands gradually, little by little by little by little by little. So you don't start off in your best action, you've got to start really just around the, the outer calf, mid outer calf area, and lengthen the chest and slowly walk the hands down, lengthen the chest, walk the hands down a little bit more. And those of you who are quite agile, just a little bit more, hold on to those lower ankles as far down as possible and elbows out to the side and release the head down. Okay, now releasing, coming up, bringing the feet together, standing Tadasana. We're coming for Prasamita Padrottanasana, but with the hands in Pashimana Maskarasana. Now when we take our hands in this way, you can see here, we want to see that we're getting that dog pose, that dog pose action in the back eventually, not straight away. So when we take the hands into the Pashimana Maskarasana, again, we're going to see, can we get that opening in the chest? Our hands are going to be in this position. I'm going to just step those legs and sharp. The legs have been prepared, the back has been prepared, and now we're lifting. I'm just going to wait for a moment. I'm reaching those elbows away from one another, extending. Looking forward, keeping those body groins. Remember what I was saying about the body groins? So you've got to work as if your hands were around those lower legs. And then if you're able to come into the full action, then there we go. Alright, so your turn. Now, the key thing about this pose is that you have no arms and only your legs. So it really makes you work so strongly in your legs and so strongly in your upper back. Now I'm going to talk you through a few things, some of the pointers we've been making already. Now if you know that you're a little unstable, then get yourself a brick foam pad for your head by all means. So I just wait for you to get prepared. Okay, let's, let's go. If you haven't already, take the legs nice and wide apart. Hands either folded in this way or Pachimha Namaskarasana. 
whichever is appropriate for your practice. Lift the chest and extend halfway. Now, once you go a little bit further, you've got to see that you're sharp in the upper body and you're gradually taking yourself down as if you're edging your hands along those outer shins. So we just edge and lift those body groins. Edge forward and lift the body groins. Edge forward again and lift those body groins. And now let the head release any amount can release onto a support on the floor, or you may just be in the action wherever you arrive. So be there, sharp in the outer foot bone. So these are very subtle actions and really strong actions too. Okay, and now you'll be pleased. We're coming out of the pose, so still maintain that control. Sharpen the outer foot bones and lift up. So the pose isn't finished until you come back to Tadasana. So come back to Tadasana and stand in with your feet together, your legs together, roll your shoulders back and down. Keep the chest lifted and the shoulders completely releasing down away from the ears and breathe. So just take a few moments now, a few softer, longer inhalations and exhalations. So be looking at the video, I'm just going to show you Padanga Shastana. When we come into this forward bend, we've already spoken about Uttanasana, we've already come into the folded arm action. We want to get as much lift as possible. Now, as much work in the dorsal. Now, some of you will get confused over this action, that the dorsal action isn't a drop in here. So this isn't one big dorsal spine. You have to see that your dorsal is really moving in between the shoulder blades, so you're getting this action hinging forward and as you do, lifting the buttocks and then taking hold of your big toes. Now, like we did in the Adhanakishmanasana, just release the head for a moment. Now, I want you to still look at the video just for this action. You're not going to lift your head. Let your head release. See, I'm just hanging the head down. I want you to see, can you lift your groins? and the dorsal in at the same time. Let the hips do it stay down. Groins and dorsal, groins and dorsal, and then look forward. Mm. Groins and dorsal in. And if some of you can come into this position, then do so. All right. So if you haven't already started the practice, then come into the practice, being sharp on those outer foot bones, and then roll the shoulders back and down and come into your Padanga Shastana. Straight to the toes, straight to the toes. And then, all of us want to hook the head, so we shorten that cervical spine. No. What we want to do now is to be sure that the groins are working, dorsal spine in, and then we can take the natural position. Try and keep the neck spine in line with the spine itself. But once see that you lengthen. Do two, three, four times. Prepare the body for that very extreme Padangashtasana. Extreme half folding that body in two. So be sure that you're sharp in your actions. Bend your elbows any amount and then release the whole of the body down. And now, slowly, coming up into Tarasana. So standing Tarasana, just be there again. Oh, how nice after that pose. Again, well, we're coming for the preparation work of Pinchamariasana. So what I want to do here is to work on getting the length in the upper arm. So I'm going to use um, the blanket here. Now most of you will be familiar with this work. So we tend to just put the elbow to lift the upper arm. It's a little bit like putting a brick underneath your heel to get a better Uttanasana. So this is the way we're going to be working. 
And I'm going to take a brick here. So what we're going to do now is to put the belt around and put the elbows onto the support like this. When you come into this action, it's really important that you don't just lift your neck up. Remember what I was saying about some of those previous poses that what you want to do is to try to get the lift in the chest and not just shorten this spinal area. So we're going to come into, just move that that way. We're coming into this lift here. Now, what a lot of people do is to lift here. No. Keep this pretty sober and see that you're getting the broadness in the legs and remember what I was saying? In that first uttanasana with the folded arms, you lift the body groin and you activate the dorsal spine. Have another go in a second. Lift the body groin and lift the dorsal. Okay. So we're going to have a little practice with that. So all of you can have a go with this, just this preparation. Remember that when the elbows go onto the higher support, get your distance and remember that you're not just pushing the head, the chin up and shortening that neck spine. That's really something you don't want to do. You want to be sure that you're working those lower body groins and the dorsal at the same time so everything becomes more open. So gradually, two or three times, have a go, see how you get on with the action, just let the head become sober, let it just release down and try not to make that over activated. So once you get that action two or three times then, release. Okay, now we're going to come into a bent leg Shavasana action. So bending the legs in this way. Just lessen the belly release. Soft inhalation and exhalation. So letting the eyes soften. And just let the breath become really nice and calm and quiet. It's time for you to just release. So let the whole of the abdomen completely release and just let the breath start to settle, quieten around the facial features, let the eyes soften, become deep, release around the temples, release around the throat, find your own connection with your breath, with the space within. And just slowly, slowly, let any thoughts dissolve away. Now, if you wish to stay in this quiet Shavasana, then stay. Otherwise, coming up into a seated position, keeping the length of your spine, keeping the quietness, keeping the mind, facial features all passive, and calm. And now bow your head and take the back of the neck in line with the spine and open your eyes. Hope you enjoyed the class today. Look forward to seeing you again very soon. Namaste.